So welcome along to iPhotography's One Light Fashion Shoot. So you've got myself Stephen and Rebecca is running the camera here. So today what we're going to do is show you part one of our One Light Fashion Shoot using our model Natasha. So the idea behind this whole session is that we're only going to be using either natural light or the lights we've brought along. So we've got some lovely LumCube panels that our friends over at LumCube have sent us um, just to try out and kind of give us a little bit of an idea how kind of small portable lighting and how effective that can be in these dark scenarios and these dark locations that we're actually going to go to. Um, so we're going to try out a variation of different shots. We've had some poses and some suggestions sent in by iPhotography students, so thank you so much for that. So we'll kind of go through, we'll have a look at the shots, a um, couple of the ideas that we've got, plan out the actual pose and the lighting and see how we can recreate it as well. So let's go. So then this time I'm just going to use Natasha's arm to actually work as a leading light into the shot. The forwards for me. Mm. So we've still got enough light on you. That's perfect for about there actually. Maybe a bit more in the centre. Get you a bit more equal. So just trying to kind of keep you a little bit more equal within the, the confines of the composition here. Um, and I think now we just need a slightly more kind of dramatic stance and sense. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Bring your legs that bit further apart. And that's just push your weight towards your left. So just for a while, we're going to use our lovely little Loom Cube light. Now this is going to be one of a couple of different lights that we're going to use during this one light fashion shoot. So we're going to use one at a time. We're not going to cheat and use multiple ones. Um, but in this instance, it's got a couple of little gel filters on the front of them here, one for warming and one for kind of cooling down um, the temperature of the light. So I'm going to kind of stack both of them on there at the minute because I wanted a slightly more diffused look. And we'll actually use it in the tunnel I'm thinking if we use it a little bit higher and to use it just to kind of add a little bit more uh, fill light, a little bit more of a rim light around the side of Natasha's head because with her having darker hair, when we're going into these darker areas, it's always troublesome that we may actually lose the definition between the side of her head and the background itself. So hopefully this is going to give us a little bit of that kind of separation between foreground and background. But we'll give it a go. We'll see how it goes. Uh, this is another light by Loom Cube. It's one of their mini panels, so a bit more widespread than the original Square Cube that we've got. So we think this would be actually quite useful in this uh, abandoned building because it's pretty dark. It's got a big opening here, but further in the background, it's pretty dark. So we want to use some shots against the wall. So we're going to try and give this a little bit of a try um, using some of the, uh, alongside some of the poses that had obviously been suggested by yourself. So kind of watch as we go. back towards the wall and then the window makes it a little bit larger but what we can do is get your hands in. Right and you have to come back a bit further for there. So 
we're just trying to reverse the idea of what we've been shooting where we've had the light behind us. Now this time we're going to actually have the light on our side and make it darker so it gives us this kind of natural framing around Natasha as it stands. So I'll come back a little bit further and just try and shoot with this whole brickwork around just so it's a little bit more clearer. is the Loom Cube mini panel. There is a larger version, this is the mini version that we've got and we think it'd be kind of quite nice and compact to use within such a small environment, but it's also kind of quite dark. Now these are extremely powerful. If I just knock it on here, it's got a kind of quick turn on button there and instantly you've got all the power. Flip it onto the back and you've got this cool little screen on here. Gives you an idea based upon the brightness that you're using at the minute, um, how long the battery's gonna last for. You can then also change the color balance on here as well. So we're fairly warm, we're set to 3,200 Kelvin, um, but you can adjust that again, just using the little, um, the, the actual little flip screen here, sorry, the, the wheel that you've got on the side, that can also adjust the power as well. And so you can kind of, as the power changes, the length of time on the battery also changes as well. So it gives you kind of a real world idea of how long this thing's gonna last. Um, it also comes supplied with these fantastic little kind of rubbery uh, diffusers on the front so obviously you can just soften the light and spread it a bit further, you can make it a bit harsher if you want. So it gives you a little bit of a play around really in terms of um, the actual you know, facilities, let's say, of the light. But it also got this cool little um, hot shoe adapter on the bottom so if you want to sit on the top of our camera you can even get adapters then to go onto your tripod if you want to use it as an off-camera light and then move it around so it's really really flexible. Um, so we're going to use this little TV unit, this fascia that we've got here, and actually you can probably say we'll place our little boom cube light down the bottom here. And I think if we get your Natasha to hold it and actually kind of look through, it'll kind of underlit the shot. As you say, it may not be very flattering, unfortunately. Um, but it's that kind of quite stark, that kind of quite almost menacing type of look. I know you don't have that kind of look naturally, but You're being this tired. is what we can do for lighting. This is what the beauty of lighting can do. So just for a minute, we're going to try out another shot that was sent to us by Tom Martin. I think this is actually one of his own photographs. So I'm thinking the wall that we've got here should kind of work. We're doing it on the opposite axis to what Tom shot it. Um, and I'm actually getting attached to the lean on here. And I'm going to shoot a little bit lower down. And we've got this pathway out on the side here, which will give us a little bit more depth of field. Done. Superb, fantastic. So good image to send us along then Tom. Hopefully we've done it justice. We try to kind of do a bit of a similar recreation, but gives everybody an idea of how to copy angles and how to kind of pose your subject if you're taking portraits like this as well. So I think just for a little while longer now, we're gonna try and recreate a few more shots so you can kind of just see as how we go um, and you kind of get a little bit of an idea as to kind of how to set up these shots and we'll throw up a few on the screen as to what we're trying to recreate um, and obviously show you our final version as well.
So there we go, we're all done. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. You've got a little bit of an idea as to how to kind of take a shot and recreate it if it's something you've seen elsewhere on the internet. Thank you so much to Natasha for coming along and modeling for us today. Um, if you've got any questions, obviously just drop them in the comments below. You can get in touch with us. You can find tons more videos on our Facebook and on our YouTube. If you're not an iPhotography member already, then please join up. It's totally worth it. And we'll see you in the next video.